in, um, in this amazing process of, of every individual to find meaning to his life, to find purpose to his life, in many of the days we're finding ourselves um, busy with, uh, with issues, with problems that distract our thoughts from the purpose. And when a person starts to think to himself, I want to come closer to, to the Creator, I want to live a meaningful life, I want to feel inspired, I want to be spiritual. And then he finds himself must go and take care of regular things, mundane. In those hours, the Yetzirah, the evil inclination of the person, for sure will attack him, try to break his spirit, to tell him you're not doing enough, you're not fulfilling your job, you're not doing the right things, you're off the path, off the way, you're far, look at you, how you waste your time, precious time, there's no loss like loss of time. And more and more negative thoughts will attack that person. But all that way of thinking is negative and wrong and twisted from the beginning, from the beginning of, of that way of thinking. Because in reality, if you think to yourself that you're serving the Creator, that you serve the Creator only when you learn, or only when you pray, or only when you feel spiritual, or high, or excited, or inspired, that assumption is very, very wrong. Because the Creator is with you every moment of your life. And the Creator, He's not expecting you to go out of your body and become a different person. The Creator, He knows your inclinations. He knows exactly how your thoughts are going. He knows your weaknesses. And He understands exactly what you're going through while you're putting effort in your life to become a better person. And the Creator Himself, He's that one that is piling those difficulties on you for a certain purpose, for a certain reason. A person that thinks that to serve Hashem to connect yourself to the Creator is only through prayer and learning Torah. He does not understand the greatness and the endless love of the Creator to all of His children. Elijah the Prophet in the book Tana de Beliau told the rabbi named Rav Anan that the real truth is that the Creator will bring His Divine Spirit to hover upon every person, a man or a woman, a Jew or a non-Jew, a slave or a free person, corresponding to His dedication to the truth, and not based on His family, his uh, legacy, his connections, his wealth. The Creator, he understands that a person 
is struggling with certain difficulties in life and the Creator is willing to see the heart. He wants to see your intention and by that He will bring and deliver all the light that you will be able to deal with and to enjoy from. When Hashem checked who going to be the right leader to lead our nation in the days of Moses, so he looked at Moses and found him that he was a kind and nice shepherd. When he looked at him watching over the animals in the field, in the desert, over there he saw Moses' attributes, his nice manners, the way that he cared about every individual, every animal, and he saw in his character that he will be the right one to help to deliver the nation of Israel out of the exile and the prison they were at in Egypt. When he wanted to choose the worthy king for Am Israel, he saw King David that he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd that was in charge and the herd taking care of the weak ones. When they were thirsty, he would bring them to the water. And he saw in his behavior that he will be the right king for the Creator's beloved nation, Am Israel. Now, in a different situation, there was a woman, her name was Devora Anevi'a, the prophet, Eshet Lapidot, and she was making wicks, like candles, for the Mishkan. In the days before the temple, only the Mishkan was built, and she was making sure that there's going to be light for the people that came to the Mishkan, that they will enjoy their visit, that they will be able to learn, that they will be able to pray, that there's going to be light. Think about an electricity person, electricity man, a woman that will come to a Beit Midrash, to a synagogue, and she will make sure that all the lamps will be the right ones, that all the light bulbs will work, that it will be clean from dust, only because she will care about those learners that will come and learn. And in that generation, she became the leader and the main prophet of Am Israel, and who she was. She was that electricity person that made sure that the light will shine in the Beit Midrash. And the Creator saw the intention of her heart and based on that He chose her to be a prophet, to be a leader that will take Am Israel to win the war and to save thousands of them and to help them to come closer to Hashem. Amazing things! Based on what? Not based on her family, not on her connection, not on the fact that she was a righteous man, an honorable... No. She was the woman that cared and brought nice candles to the, to the Mishkan. And the Creator, He saw the heart. The Creator, He saw the intention of that pure person and chose them to serve. Chose them to play in a higher role and to represent His kingship and to be a leader. And for that a person must always remember that the Creator is looking at your heart. And except of working hard on yourself, to check yourself, to work on your heart, to be aware to yourself, to listen to the inner voice of your heart and to check, am I honest? Am I doing the best that I can? Am I putting the effort in the right points? Am I being responsible? Am I helping? Do I care about others? Am I a person that is straight in his heart? If you will do that in your life, no matter what is your profession, how you spend your time, what you do for a living, which people are around you, as long as your heart is honest with your journey with Hashem, Hashem will shine upon you. 
Hashem will hint you and Hashem will make you understand things that will uplift you and will rise you to places that no eye of no person ever saw before. In the days of Moses, when Moses took Am Yisrael out of Egypt and they went into the Red Sea, they were walking in dry land over there. Every single one of the people that went through the walls of water had the merit, the blessing from heaven that he became like a prophet. He was able to see things when the sky had been opened, they saw sights, they all saw the voices, saw voices. They've been blessed by heaven in a greater blessing than their vessels because that Moses was their rabbi, because the time was ready. We are working in a generation that 99% or maybe even 100% of the people in our generation, in our lifetime, are totally blind. Cannot see one inch in front of your eyes, cannot recognize. Even if you look at books, you have a book and that book is Torah and you want to read, you don't understand what's written in the book. You try to understand the simple meaning, just the pshat, the intention of the words to understand what was the intention of Hashem by telling us those verses and you can't. And you go to consult with wise people, with people that you assume that they are greater than you, that they are wiser than you, and you, it, you can't even find them. And if you found one, and if you found two, they're not complete. It's so hard to find completion. And you look at someone and for years you can think to yourself, oh that, he is the most righteous man in the generation. Oh, that person is so godly and so holy and he has a divine spirit. And after a few years, suddenly you're being so hurt and so disappointed. And you see that life in our lifetime are not simple to, to handle, to deal with. We cannot understand what's going on. And we're trying and we're working hard to understand and we're dedicating time and all the time you have those up and downs, all the time new confusions, new issues, new problems, things that are coming into your plate, into your life, into your house and you're trying to do the best that you can. And the Creator does not bring us yet to that place of quiet to that place so that our mind will be settled, that we will be relaxed. The Creator have not brought us yet, bring us yet to that place of relaxation, of deep understanding, of settled mind, not yet. And this is why we cannot be disappointed from the up and downs and the crazy roller coaster that we experience in our lifetime because that's the journey. Because that's the time and that's the hour. And here in that court, in this reality, we need to function. We need to work. We need to serve. You want to learn Torah and you cannot understand what you're learning. You want to have half an hour of quiet and you cannot reach it. You want to have a little bit of merits, a little bit of options, a little bit of, of ways to serve, to some change to give for charity and you find yourself that the doors are closed and locked and sealed from you and you're not able to catch a, a minyan and you try to catch a train and you miss it and another 45 minutes and you lost the class that you desired and put all your effort and plan for, to, to catch that class and nothing works like you want it. And people want to get married and waiting for 5 years and for 10 years and for 15 years and like what's going on? If the salvation was really depend in your wedding, in your marriage, I promise to you Hashem would have given that to you. If your salvation was depend in your learning, I promise you Hashem would give it to you. But that's not your real salvation. The salvation is not what you desire, is not the solutions that you came up with or that your pals, your friends, your rabbis came up with. There is a godly plan and the godly plan is much deeper and way more complex than you can imagine. 
And as long as you don't know who you are at all, you cannot think to yourself that you know what's the solution when you don't know what the problem is. When you still don't know what the things that you need to solve in life, how can you pretend that you know the answer for the question? When you don't know the question, I know about myself and I'm just sharing. I'm not a rabbi and I'm not qualified for anything. I'm barely finishing my days. I'm putting all my effort to be the most honest person that I can be, to be the best husband and the best father for my children, to be the best friend of my friends, to be a good partner in life to everyone around me. I'm putting an effort as a human being to be good. And this is my life journey. For at least 20 years that that's what I'm doing with my life. And I can testify on myself that for 12 years I was sitting every day, almost every day, in a yeshiva. And I was learning Torah for at least 8 hours every day. And I would read from I don't know how many books. I would put a pile like that of 20, 30, 40, depends on the time of books every day and I would not go to sleep before I finished learning in all those books and I would take them with me to the house and I would sit in the couch in the sofa in the living room when my wife went to sleep and the kids were already asleep for a long time or long ago and I would read in another book and fall asleep and waking up again in another book and another book and another book and I can tell you, I was learning from the Chumash and from the Navi, the Prophets. And I would read Mishnayot and I would have two Sdarim in Mishnayot. I would read Mishnayot, learning Mishnayot Be'iyun means to understand every word that is written with all the explanations. And I would read 18 chapters of Mishnayot every day. And I would read Midrashim, and I would read Gemara, and I would read the Zohar Kadosh, and I would read at least three or four books of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, the Breslev Hasidut, and I would read from the Tanya, and I would read the stories of righteous people, and I would read more and more and more and more, and I would read Kabbalah, and I would read from the Shulchan Aruch and the Mishnah Bura because I had few Sdarim. Also in Mishulchan Aruch and also in the Mishnah Bura, learning Halakha. And I would invest hours on hours on daily basis on my learning. And I'll tell you the truth. I have not achieved from that learning even 1% from what that I achieved from the honest conversations that I had until today with my wife. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm just like, you're laughing at me because I sound silly? What? I, I tell you the truth. The honesty of having a simple conversation brings you straight to the core of, of your life. Brings you straight into Hashem's plan, desire from your life, expectation from you to work. You can learn for days, you can learn for months, you can learn for years and not to know what you're looking for. What are the problems that you need to work on? You are, can learn Torah and you can pray for salvation and for complete redemption and you can do whatever people tells you to do you can wake up before dawn, you can go to the mikveh, you can go to the synagogue, you can sit and learn Torah, and then you can go and do this and do that and run all day long and giving charity and helping people without no one know what you're doing and you can always pray in the minyan, in the mincha and in mayrib and then to go home and then to go and do tikkun chatzot and you can also do it in the holy land of Israel and you can do it in the western wall and you can learn in the old city and you can do six hours it but do it every night and you can do and do and do and to be a lost and confused soul that doesn't have a clue doesn't have no understanding and the ability to define between right to wrong right to left to be lost and confused and sad and depressed and with bad attributes with anger and with frustration and with hatred in your heart 
and black bitterness and deep depression and you don't know anything. You know why? Because you're not searching the truth. You're following people and people's opinions. You're following your fears instead of following Hashem. People gives you solutions. Rabbi gives you solutions. Tell you, hey, you need to learn five hours, six hours, at least four hours learning every day. You know, and on. I heard all the methods. I heard all the she taught. I've been there. I've done that. I'll tell you, it doesn't work. It doesn't work as long as you are not searching for the truth. When you become a truth seeker, then you can find the truth between the cucumbers in the grocery store. When your desire is for the truth, when your passion is for the truth, the real truth, and you seek for it with all your heart, then you keep Now you started. Now you love Hashem. Now you're one of the followers of heaven. When you look for Him in all your ways, in all the paths, in all the turns, in all the intersections, in all corners, in the darkest alleys, in the valley of shadows of death, under the sheets of hell, in the darkest places, there you can find Hashem. Because there is no place that Hashem is not there. And therefore you can find Him no matter where you're going to be. But only if you seek for the truth. Not if you're seeking for excuses or for easy solutions. Because when someone comes to you and tells you, Hey, I have a solution for your problem. And you know that you have domestic problems, you have horrible things going on in your life. You know that you are poor, you know that you are broken, you know that you are not married, you know that you don't have a house, you know that you don't feel so good, you know that you are broken as hell and you don't have a clue what to do with your life. And suddenly a person comes to you and tells you, look, what's the problem? You need to come to the Beit Midrash, four hours every day, go to the Mikveh, and that's it, try to catch a Minyan, and you solved all your problems. It sounds perfect, like it sounds like the best idea, solution in the world. Like really? I can just hang out with all those stoners for four hours every day, and that's it, solution to all my problems? But it's a lie. It's not going to help you. You know when you're going to realize that? After four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, fifteen years of burning those hours without achieving anything. Now, of course, people are going to say, Rav Dror is saying not to learn Torah. Rav Dror is saying, okay, we heard all those nonsense. But ask me why Rav Dror is spending so many hours every day of his life on doing this mission on waking up people to find purpose to their lives. Why am I doing it if not because I love Hashem and I love His Torah? Why am I doing it? But in the same time, I'm saving people from falling into that thin layer that is called Klipat Noga, a certain husk that is so close to the fruit that you find it hard to recognize that it's a husk and not the fruit itself. And people that are claiming, I want to be close to Hashem, I want to be close to the Torah, I want to be close to the righteous ones, they're finding themselves falling into that trap of staying lazy and pretending to be religious. And that's the worst husk, the worst darkness of them all. Why? Because the person that fell into that pit, into that trap, he imagined to himself that he's on the highway, that he's on the path, that he already found the goal, that he already lives in the treasure. Now he doesn't need to worry on fixing himself. The Torah is fixing him, and the Beit Midrash is fixing him, and the Mikveh is fixing him, so he's now exempt. He's exempt from all the real work that the Creator wants him to work on his Midot. Because the closeness to heaven depends in your dedication to the truth. And who is the person that dedicates his life to the truth? 
the one that will be ready to accept the truth if he will hear it no matter from who. Who is a wise person? The one that is ready to learn from every human being, from every person he will learn. He will open his ears to listen and to hear the truth from every person, even from a person in the market, even a regular person that he never met in his life. He, with his heart, with his pure intention to learn, will become a vessel to contain the bounty, the light of heaven, that will fix him and will heal him. People need to achieve that level, to love the rebuke, to love the tests that are showing you your lackings, to love those situations that are straightening you, that are fixing you, to appreciate them, to understand that from the downs, that from the difficulties, that from life challenges, you only learn and only grow. Not to look for the pleasure of being a servant of Hashem. The pleasure is a reward in the world to come. The pleasure is the inner feeling of a person that understands that he is doing the right thing, that he is ready to de dedicate time in his life, that he is ready to push himself into doing the right thing. That when he hears a rebuke from a close person, from a friend, from a life partner, he's willing to listen even if it will narrow your steps, even if it will make you feel not comfortable because you desire the truth. And then Hashem will be close to you and you will feel the blessing of Hashem. Because Hashem is close only to those ones that are saying the truth only those ones that are saying the truth and are willing to hear the truth can see the face of heaven, can enjoy the light of His greatness. Because our Creator is the God of truth. Hashem Elokim Emet. Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. When you're lying even to yourself, when you choose to follow your fears instead of following and, and walking after the, the, the behind the great light of heaven that represents the truth in all its shades, in all its forms. Before you choose to dedicate your life to the truth, you can be so far from it. And even if you dress like an, an orthodox person, like an observant person, even if you spend hours every day in the Beit Midrash, it's written on the Torah that if a person purified himself enough, the Torah will become a potion of life to him. And if the, when he is learning from the learning, and if he haven't purified himself enough, it, the Torah itself, the same pure Torah that been given to us from Mount Sinai, can become a lethal poison for the person who learns it. There is a story on that demon, on that um, dark angel in the days of King Solomon, Hamelech Shlomo, and that demon was coming down, the Midrash is saying, every night at midnight. That angel, dark angel, that demon would come down and going, and with his impure hands, he was contaminating the water of Torah. He would put his hands that were impure into the well of water of Torah. And when the learners would come in the morning to drink from that well, they would be impured, contaminated by the water of Torah. Without even knowing, without even understanding. How will you know, let's say for an example, how will you know if the Torah that you're learning is healing you, is building you, is reviving you? If in the end of the day you find yourself happier, if you find yourself that your midot, that the way of your behavior is better, is nicer, if you find yourself that you are more patient to sit with your friends, with your wife, with your children, if you find yourself that now you're able to give more charity than you were before in your heart, not in your wallet, in your will, in your desire, if you find yourself that you care more about other people, then you should know that the Torah works for you. 
then you can know for sure that the light of heaven is purifying you, is healing you, is building you from within. But if you sit every day to learn Torah, and in the end of that learning, you find yourself more upset and more angry, and hate and blame everyone around you, and you have issues with everyone, and you can't understand other people that are not serving Hashem, and you lost your temper, you lost your happiness, you lost your satisfaction from life, so some poison penetrated into your learning. And therefore you need to work on yourself to have that merit that the learning of the Torah will heal you and not going to kill you. And for that a person needs to come to that point that he himself works on himself to become a better person. And to be a better person is in your way is that you will find the right way what you need to do to make Hashem happier with your behavior. Someone once told me, how will you know if to tell a joke or not? Think to yourself, if I'm going to tell that joke to Hashem, will He laugh from that joke or won't? If Hashem won't laugh from your joke, so don't tell it. Always you need to imagine, to think to yourself, Hashem is with me. You need to remind yourself of that issue, of that truth. Shiviti Hashem lenegdita mid, Hashem is with me in every situation. In every moment of my life, Hashem is with me. And now when Hashem is with me, Hashem is checking me. Hashem is looking at me. Hashem expects me to do something. All right, so what does Hashem want from me right now? What can I do? If now I desire to learn, if now I desire to pray, if now I desire to make holy things with my time, to spend my time in holiness, in purity, but I see that challenges are coming, the difficulties are coming, that I cannot focus in the learning, that I'm not able to catch that, that class, that they, I have other errands, things that I must take care of, and I don't know what to do. I need to ask, all right, so what does Hashem want from me right now? It cannot be that Hashem only wants me to do things that are beyond my power. It cannot be that Hashem wants me to achieve things that are way far from my reach. For sure that the Creator wants me to connect myself to Him now in my reality, in my life situation. And it means that in that moment, even if you're not able to do what your heart desires, you have a lot of other work to do with Hashem. Like being patient, like having faith, like realizing that the Creator is with you. Like to believe in that and understand it and to walk with it. And when you walk like that, with that simple faith, the light of heaven that shines inside of you, that is holding you, will not only illuminate yourself, also will shine to others. Because there are other people out there that are also willing to connect, to find a way into the zone of purity of Gdusha. And when they will see you happy with your share, understanding and serving and being nice, and being polite and generous, they will attach themselves to you. They will feel connection to you and they will want to learn from you. And immediately you will be able to give them from your wisdom and they will be able to give you and you will learn from each other and from life situations. And that learning can be much deeper than a learning from a book. That's the wisdom that a person earns from life experience and the main wisdom of a person is the wisdom that he gains in hard hours like the Rambam said the Rambam said that a person most of his learning means the real achievements are coming from the learning that he learns at night now if a person learns only in the day so it means that nothing will left from him no the night are coming to, is a, is, is a tale. The Rambam is using that concept to, uh, to, for us to understand that in those dark hours that you find some power to learn even if you don't have a candle, even if you don't have a light, even if you're alone and you're not able to learn in a group, in those hours 
the achievements of your learning will be much higher and much deeper. And it depends only in the intention of your heart. How much you desire the truth. The Creator created the world in that way that our generation, that our days will be hard days, will be complex days. And in those days we're going to find ourselves lost and confused, looking and searching for our own identity, trying to figure out what's our life mission. Things won't be clear, things won't be simple. And the Creator, He knows that. The Creator, He understands the difficulties of our lives. He understands the challenges that we are facing. And He is with us in that journey. And we're all in it to win it. And the way to win it is only through that honest heart. To understand that the Creator planned that path, planned it for you, for you to succeed in it. For you to understand that you need to serve Him no matter where you are at. In every moment, in every situation, there is something that you can do. And if you cannot see immediately the reward coming and the blessing of heaven, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It's only that this hour is a hard hour. It's only that this time is a hard time, is a difficult time. And you need to check yourself. If you're falling to despair, if you're falling to sadness, to depression, it means that your faith is still weak. It means that you are still not completely dedicated to the truth and willing to sacrifice your life for it. I remember that few, uh, a few days ago I was going through a very hard time in my mind and I had a negative thought about myself. I said to myself, hey, you're wrong. Like you're doing something that you're doing is wrong. And then I heard a voice inside of myself and that voice told me, no, you are strong and you're achieving a lot. It's very easy to criticize yourself. It's very easy to focus on your lackings. When a person is walking in the street, let's say you have a journey for one hour to walk from your house to your office, to your job. It takes for you one hour to walk. Let's say that one moment in that one hour, you lost your focus and you failed. You're going to remember that dark spot for the rest of your life on that failure. But the other 59 minutes that you were walking straight, you're not going to remember them. You're going to remember one failure, one mistake, but hours on hours and amazing days of dedication to the truth and a beautiful blessed effort on good things to do, that you work, that you try. That you dedicate your time to noble causes, to amazing things. That you help people, that you have patience, that you care, that you call, that you talk, that you learn, that you pray, that you do amazing things. All those shiny hours disappear when you focus on the dark spots, on the negative things that happen to you in life. But the person must understand that that's the way of the Yetzirah of the evil inclination to break our self-esteem, to make us think that we are lousy, that we're not worthy, that we are wrong, that we are weak, that we are worthless, that we are hopeless, that Hashem doesn't listen to us, that our prayers doesn't achieve anything, no goal, that we're not being answered, that our learning does not satisfy heaven, that we haven't achieved anything from all the hours that we learn. That's not the truth. The truth is that we are achieving so much, but that the mission had not finished yet. That our mission to bring complete redemption to the world has not been completed yet. And as long as we are working, we are winning. Because the fact is that we just need to keep on walking toward that goal, toward that amazing day of redemption. And people forgot about it. People are so busy with, with, with themselves. People are so lost. Everyone is so stuck in his life that he like, lost the, the purpose of our life. 
The real purpose of our life is to reach that moment of redemption, to bring the redemption, to make it happen, to prepare ourselves for that moment and never to, to, to distract our thought from that. That Mashiach can appear in every moment. That the Creator is about to change our reality in, in no time. And they're following their fears even into good places, even into good habits, even into amazing schedules during the day. But they're doing it without understanding that they are on a complete mission that's been created by our beloved Creator. That He Himself knows exactly what we're going through. And He's causing all those up and downs for us in our lives for a purpose. And that purpose is only to build a vessel of humble, of humility inside of us. For us to be humble, to be able to understand the greatness of the Creator. How He gives life into forms. How He gives us the, the will to live. How He makes the fruits sweet for us to desire them. How He makes reality so beautiful and so amazing for us to want to achieve more things. And He opens our eyes and He straights the path for us to continue and to succeed and to grow. But never to give up. Never to fall into that sadness that is coming from a low self-esteem. Because you're finding yourself that you're not as rich as you hope to be. And you find yourself facing difficulties. And you find yourself in hard hours confronting and dealing with, uh, with hard and, and, and terrifying fears. And with shames and with, with, with many feelings of, of despair and loneliness. But in those hours you must reconnect yourself to your inner voice and to remind yourself, I still don't know what my real mission is. My real mission, first of all, is to believe in Hashem and to believe that He is supervising on my life. To understand that the Creator, He cares about me and therefore He opens my eyes and opens my heart to aim me to the right purpose. To push me toward great achievements. For me to learn faith. The Creator, He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our time. He doesn't need our talents. The Creator wants our heart. He wants to see that we are honest. He wants to see that we want to be good people. That we care about each other and that we want to care about each other. That is what that He is waiting from us. For us to be better people, for us to believe in ourselves, for us not to fall to despair and to sadness, for us not to fall into that darkness of our negative thoughts. The Creator, He planted inside of us that godly soul that is shining from within and calling us always to search and to look for His face. To look for His face, it's to look for His reflections. It's to look for the message that He is sending to us every moment of our lives. And His voice is the voice of truth. And the truth is not something divine and high and hidden that we need to search for. The truth is the most simple thing. Don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Don't be lazy in your journey. Be honest with yourself. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Don't dress in a way that you don't feel comfortable with. Don't talk in a way that you don't really talk. Don't try to make people like you or love you or appreciate you. Just be who you are and express your real feelings and your real thoughts and be honest in your journey. And then the blessing of heaven will shine upon you and you will understand things because of your truth, because of your honesty. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So in that moment that you will just say the truth, Hashem will come. And when Hashem will come, the healing will come. And the salvation will come. And the blessing will come. And the wisdom will come. And the completion will come. And everything will come. And you will understand who you are. You can understand who you are. There is a story in the Gemara that Moses asked Hashem, how can it be one person was sitting on a bench 
and he had his wallet with a lot of money in it and he stood up from that bench and went away, went somewhere else and suddenly a thief came, took the wallet and ran away and then a third person came and sat on the bench. The first person that lost his wallet came back to that bench. He saw the third person that never heard about this situation, didn't know, never touched the money and he blamed him. You took my wallet, my wallet was here, it was only two minutes ago, you were the only person and killed him. The person that lost his wallet killed that innocent third person that just sat on the bench with no reason. Moses asked Hashem, how can it be in your world that you're the God of justice, that you're the God of truth, how can it be that an innocent person will be killed by a person that blames him in a crime that he never committed? How can it be? So the Creator told him, listen, this is not the first time that those three came together to a lifetime. In a different lifetime, they came in different roles. That one that been killed right now, he was the murderer in a different lifetime. And that one that killed right now, was that one that been killed for no reason in a different lifetime. <coughs> and everything came to the right order. But you with your eyes cannot see that. You look at a person and he seems to you like he's innocent and you cannot tell. The main thing is to look at yourself and to understand the things that you're going through in life are much deeper than you can imagine. Things that you go through in life are coming from a reason. If you're still not married, there's a reason for that. If you're struggling with money, there's a purpose and a reason for that thing. <coughs> and you need to understand and to believe in the Creator that He is looking on this world from above. Think about this world. For you this <coughs> world looks like you see it from your own eyes. But you are one lane, you are one time ta tunnel in this world. You're looking on the world from your point of view and you see s almost nothing compared to the reality of this world. And the Creator, He is the only one that is able to observe and to look and to see the complete whole wide world from every angle, from every aspect and also knowing exactly who are the souls that are inside the bodies and knowing exactly how many times they came in different lifetimes and which particles their souls are holding and who they really are and what their real mission is and what they're doing here and what will be their completion and how they will complete what they need to complete and gonna achieve what they need to achieve. And only He knows all those details. And we don't know anything. We are blind completely. We cannot see and we cannot recognize. And we don't understand. And for that the Creator gave us that blessing of having faith in Him. Or the obligation to work on our faith and to believe in Him. Because the belief, the faith is in that place that your mind cannot reach. You don't need to believe that, something simple like you don't need to believe that, that that's the, you don't even have car keys anymore. It's like in, the, in our generation like you can, like someone have car keys. You don't need to believe in things that your eye sees. You don't need to believe that those are car keys. You need to believe me that it's the car keys for my car. Or if I'll tell you that it's for your car. That you need to believe. Why? Because you cannot see it. But if you can see it's a car key. Okay, I see. You don't need to believe that it's a car key. When you see it's a car key. I can see. You don't need to believe. But the Creator told us that we should believe in Him. Based on the fact that we cannot see Him. Because certain situations we cannot grab. We cannot understand and we cannot understand and recognize His supervision, His unique light that is shining. And therefore we need to believe because we cannot know it. 
We cannot understand it with our minds. And we need to be people of faith and to go with that simple faith in our life journeys. And even if our journeys are not bright as we expected or hoped or were willing for them to be, even if we're facing downs, even if we are facing <coughs> challenges, even if we're facing difficulties and piles of them, we need to believe that our lives are meaningful, that there is a purpose for every challenge, for every difficulty. And it's coming for a purpose and what that purpose is for us to work on our midot, for us to become nicer and more humble and more kind and softer and more sensitive to other people. And that's the purpose of our creation, for us to reveal and to reflect the heavenly light that had been treasured inside of us. That if you know that He is mercy, merciful, you should be mercy as well. If you see that He, and you believe that He is kind and nice, you should be kind and nice. If you know about Him, that He is the God of truth, you need to be truthful. You need to reveal that godly light, that portion of heaven that's been given to you as your soul. You need to reflect it out to the world. You need to shine that light to others that others will enjoy that light, that they will come closer to the Creator through you. And it depends in your dedication to the truth. And people can make huge and amazing things in life. And we must stop with our self-hatred and blamings and criticism. Because we are warriors. And as a warrior, as a soldier in a battlefield, you cannot criticize yourself on the fact that your uniform are filthy, that you don't have money in your pockets, that you're not spending time with your wife and children in the house. You are now defending your country. You are now fighting against the enemy. You are now in the <coughs> middle of a war, except of fulfilling your job and your mission. You don't have anything else to do. Your mission now in this dark generation, in those hard hours, is to keep your sanity, is to keep yourself happy, it's to keep yourself positive, it's to do things that will give you the power to continue and to grow. And if that's your mission, so you need to put all your effort on that, even if you find your happiness outside of the Beit Midrash. Even if you cannot find yourself spending hours on learning and praying or whatever. If you're not going to work enough and you won't have enough money to pay your bills, you're going to lose your mind and then what's going to happen? So you're not allowed to let yourself get to that edge that you will crash, that your family will crash, that you will fall to debt, that you will fall to fears, to anxieties, to pressure. You cannot bring yourself to that situation and therefore you need to think wisely how to run your life. And then you can understand from that simple, honest investigation that you make with yourself, that simple calculation. All right, I need to work. All right, I need to work out. All right, I need to do certain things in life that Hashem, He is also with you in that journey. That Hashem is not a cruel leader that is standing in the side and blames you and criticizes you and judge you and hates you for who you are. He put those obstacles and He expects you to be honest. He put those difficulties in your life and He wants to see who you're going to be when you're going to face them. If you're going to stay honest or that you're going to become a liar. If you're going to stay positive and good or that you're going to choose your own selfishness and laziness and sadness <coughs> and depression. Are you going to try to uplift yourself and to make some positive changes in your life or that you want other people to do the work for you? That is what the Creator is expecting from us. To be as honest as we can and as nice as we can, and as generous as we can, and not more than our ability, not more than we're able to do in life. 
And in that situation in life, we must understand in every moment of our life, the Creator is with us. The Creator is the Father of mercy <coughs> and He understands your journey and He accepts your difficulties and He wants you to learn something from them. He wants you to work on your attributes, on your midot, that you will learn from those life situations how to become a better person. That's the main purpose. <coughs> and for that we must have faith. Because without faith, when the person is just working on himself for himself alone, without knowing and remembering that the Creator is with us, is with you, you can lose your faith, you can lose your happiness, you can lose your hope very fast. And for that, the faith has been given to us to be able to deal <coughs> with the nights, to be able to deal with the darkness, to deal with the hardest hours of them all. The faith is the blessing and it's the gift that's been given to us to cross the nights. So when you find yourself in those hard hours, when we are finding ourselves in front of challenges and facing difficulties, we need to strengthen ourselves in our faith. And our faith must start with our faith in ourselves, that we will believe in ourselves. That we will believe that we are okay. That we will accept ourselves. That we will understand that it's not easy. That it's okay that you need to work. That it's okay that you need to deal with other things except of learning and praying. That it's okay that you need to function like a regular person. And it doesn't make you to be a low life or a horrible person or someone that is hopeless or worthless. You can stay holy and righteous inside your heart even if you're working 8 and 10 and 12 and 16 hours a day. There were hidden righteous people that were working as carpenters, as shoemakers, as builders of houses, building in, uh, 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 streets, doing any kind of work. And their heart was pure and aimed to heaven. And your heart is in your hand. Your heart is in your mind to decide what you want to do with it. If you want to straight up your heart and always to think about heaven and always to try to do the best thing that you can and always to push yourself to be positive and to be as happy as you can and always to look for, for good reasons to, to praise Hashem and to find ways how to help other people and to build yourself. When you do that, it doesn't matter where you are and how you look and how much money you have. You're going to find yourself as a happy person. You're going to be happy with your work. You're going to be happy with your achievements. Even if someone else won't appreciate it and criticize you, you're going to know what you earned you're going to know about yourself because you will know, but I did the best that I could. I put my effort on helping that person. I put my effort in building myself. I paid my bills. I was able to pay for my rent. I was able to fix lunch for my children. I was doing the right thing. And then happiness will fill you from within. Even if you're not holding the heights, even if people are not worshipping you or praising you, just you will know what really you achieved by being honest, by being truthful, by being close to the truth as much as you can. That's our mission, to connect yourself to the truth, to Hashem, to the Creator, is to connect yourself to reality. To reality the truth is the reality in the reality when you are needed you are needed when you are must to do when you must do something you must do that thing when you're obligated to certain things you're obligated to those things if you're gonna neglect those things those things will fall those things will crash if they are under your responsibility you're not supposed to let them crash it means that that's your job, that's your heavenly job, that's your divine mission, that's the will of heaven from you to put your effort into those things. So don't hate yourself and blame yourself for not being I don't know what. People imagine to themselves that for them to be righteous, 
they need to be like the Baal Shem Tov or like Rabbi Nachman of Breslev or the ba Baal Atanya or whatever. Ask yourself what would they do if they would be in my place? What would the Baal Atanya do if he would sit in my place, in my reality, when I'm now 25, 35, 45, 55, in my reality? How would Rabbi Nachman of Breslev would deal with reality if he would find himself as a Baal Tshuva 20 years old, 50 years old, 70 years old? Esther Amalka, don't think to yourself, oh, I'm not Esther, you're not Esther. But what would Esther do if she would come in a different lifetime as a Baalat Tshuva that woke up and opened her eyes only after 35 years of sinning, of falling, of failing. Maybe now when you will rejudge yourself, with those eyes you're going to see how many qualities there are in you. That with all the difficulties and all the challenges and all the darkness of this generation, you still function. You still work on yourself. You still push yourself to have hope and to build yourself and stabilize yourself. Imagine to yourself how much power is needed from a person not to fall to despair in our days. Not to fall to sadness. Not to hate himself. Not to blame yourself. Not to criticize yourself 24-7. And that's the effort that you put. And based on that effort you will be rewarded and you already are rewarded. Because the Creator, He sees the heart. And He sees your dedication. And He sees all the temptations and all the distractions. And He sees all the difficulties. And He's the Creator of all this dark reality that is surrounding us. And he sees that you are fighting and that you're battling and that you're trying again and that even when you're falling you're not backing off and you push yourself again to go to the mikveh and to do tshuva and to do it bodedut and to try again and not to fall to worst condition and to go and talk to someone and to open your heart in front of Hashem and when Hashem sees that it's an amazing thing for him to see <coughs> Because it's a tiny light, you're right, but it's in such a dark place. And that light is shining in such a beautiful light when it's coming from that dark place that we are all living at. And those are our days. Those are days of darkness. Those are days of nights. Those are days that are before the redemption. Those are the last days of the exile. They are the darkest days of them all. And in that darkness, look at us. We woke up out of nowhere. There was no chance in the world. No one believed in us. You must understand. No one believed in us and we woke up. And against all chances, all odds, we are pushing forward. We're trying. When people don't have time for us, when people don't care about us, when people don't invest in us, when people don't help us, when people don't assist us, when people don't back us up, and we are keep on pushing, we are keep on trying, we keep on doing the best we can with no communities and with no support and with no help and with our fingernails dragging ourselves to achieve another goal and to make another step and with our weak power and with our low sources we're continuing in that journey to find Hashem and to reveal His faith and our faith in Him to the wide world and to advertise it and to distribute it to others. And based on that, the Creator is choosing us because He sees that, the honest points of our hearts, and He's collecting us, and He's gathering us in every situation. He's collecting those good sparks, those holy souls, and uniting them, uniting us and connecting our hearts together and in one moment and that moment is so close so close the Creator will change the supervision in this world 
and the world will not work under the rules of nature anymore. And suddenly only His godliness and His greatness will be sh revealed and shine and reflected from reality. All the trees will shine the light of heaven. All the animals will show the light of the Creator. All human beings, everyone will just talk about the truth. All the creation will surrender completely to Him. And in that moment, we will enjoy the fruits of our labor. In that moment, we will understand how great we were to serve Him in such darkness. When we're going to see that light of redemption, we're going to understand why we are those heroes that brought the redemption. Because we are them. We are those ones. We are those ones that are swimming against the stream. And the stream is hard and strong. We are those ones that are finding our way in the dark. We are those ones that are surviving with no food, with no spiritual food. We are those ones that are fighting for our lives from depressions and from being suicidal and from all the anxieties and the sickness of the spirits. And we're battling and we're fighting to stay positive and to uplift our heads above the water and not to surrender to the depression and to the darkness of our days. And because of that, we must appreciate and count ourselves as heroes, as real warriors, as real troopers and soldiers of heaven, because we are trying. And like I said before, a soldier that is already deep, deep, deep in the war, behind the lines of the enemy, he cannot look at the color of his uniform and blame himself not to being clean and neat and tight. You cannot blame yourself that your hands are not clean when your face and your body is already for a few months or years in the mud. You cannot criticize yourself on your hair, on your face, on your look. There is no connection between how you look to who you are. You need to care to that spiritual aspect of your being. To know who you are. Who you are in every situation. Who you are when you're learning. Who you are when you're praying. Who you are when you're in shopping. Who you are when you're talking to people. Who you are when you're at work. Who you are when you're scared. Who you are when you're afraid. Open the book of Tehillim. The Psalms of King David. His songs. And see that that king of our nation, the eternal king and the Mashiach and all the praises that have been given to him and you will look at a person that was terrified, that was lost, that was confused, that was poor, that was broken, that was sad, that people chased him and he had to stay and run alone into the desert and to hide from his family and to be humiliated by his best friends and he suffered and people tried to kill him and he had to hide himself in a cave and in the desert and to pretend to be crazy but he never dropped his face he never dropped his scream to Hashem he was always calling Hashem and based on that, he'd been chosen to be who he is. Not because of his wealth or his success or his greatness was his spiritual greatness. His dedication for the truth. The fact that he never backed off no matter what happened to him. He was always willing to do more and to call Hashem and to be a person of faith. We cannot criticize ourselves for not being someone else. We can only try to recognize the real qualities of our souls because it's written on every one of us that we hold a portion of heaven inside of us. And that godly portion is who you are. That's your soul. And it's beautiful because it's godly. It's Hashem Himself. 
It's the light of the Creator that shines inside of you. Find it. Find yourself. Recognize your qualities. Work on yourself to find your true self. The real qualities, talents, pearls and diamonds that have been given to you from your Father in Heaven. And then you'll find true happiness and comfort in your journey. You're going to know exactly who you are. And you're going to function with the tools that have been given to you. And you're going to do your job and you're going to be happy. And you're not going to look to the sides all the time to try to pretend to be like others and imitate others and, and always to lose your true self in that task that is imaginary. Only to focus within. Only to find the real self, the real connection that is an inner connection. To find your inner soul, to find the soul that is coming from heaven and gives you life from within. The way to do it is only with an honest conversation between you to yourself. Only to talk to yourself. If you need to write things down, so write things down. If you need to talk to a friend for you to be able to hear yourself, so do it with a friend. But the main and last thing that you need to do is to learn on yourself who you are, what your qualities are, to find them, to recognize them, to nurture them, to work with them, to share them, to illuminate the world with the light that has been given to you, to us. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.